coming to my mom. It was really, they were, and unfortunately they did break up, but they were an unusual couple. Um, she was a, a light-complected black woman from the countryside. Uh, but her family was actually a prosperous family. My father grew up poor in Halifax, uh, even though, even though uh, uh, his mom knew five languages as well as music. She had to make a living as a laundress. Uh, in Halifax, and and uh, and they were poor. They were simply poor, but nevertheless, they had this intellectually oriented household. He did as a, as a son, as a, as a boy, uh, and and so that oriented him in that direction. But unfortunately, he wasn't able to get further in school in grade ten. Although I have to say very quickly that for a black man to have grade ten in the 1950s in Halifax, that was a lot because again, most folks would get to grade six and sometimes only to grade three. So he got the grade 10, which was saying a lot. Was he alive when you became the Port Laureate of Canada? Unfortunately, no. Um, but uh, he passed away in 2005. But he did, uh, I'm happy to say that he lived long enough to see uh, uh, his son become a professor at Duke University, which was at the time, in the 1990s, the number one English department on the planet. Uh, and he was alive when I received the Governor General's Award for Poetry. He was driving a taxi. Did he, Did he come? No, he didn't. But he was driving a taxi in Halifax, and and uh, I'd gone to Ottawa for the ceremony and so on. And and uh, there was a photograph taken of myself and the then uh, Governor General, Her Excellency Adrian Clarkson, <clears throat> yeah, presenting me with with the award. And and uh, that picture was on the front pages of both Halifax newspapers, above the fold, above the fold. <laughs> so the Chronicle, Herald, Mail, Star. Uh, and the Daily News, which was the other uh, newspaper, all ran that same photograph above the fold. And so there's my dad driving the, the taxi, and people are stepping out in the street holding up the newspaper for him to see, see his son, right? Uh, uh, so he was happy with that. He was happy about my receipt of the Pierre Elliott Trudeau Fellows Prize, which was very sweet. Um, and and uh, he called me to wish me well as a result of, as a result of that news. Um, and, and, uh, but I have to say, unfortunately, because of my parents' divorce, which was very bitter, which occurred, uh, when I was, uh, they were actually divorced when I was 14, but the breakup took about two years, so it was a whole lot of stress in our home, a whole lot of stress. Very, 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 uh, upsetting times. Um, and, and, uh, and I think that had a you know, big impact on me in lots of ways, but in any event, um... Uh, we were a little bit estranged uh, by the time he passed away. Uh, but he left me his diary from 1959, the year I was conceived. And he attached to the diary this little note for George so you will understand. And, and uh, it took me a year before I could read it because I was just too mm -hmm. emotional. I was really upset about the fact that he died because I was sort of like, there was just so many things that had not been, for me, settled with him. We never did, we never had that conversation about why things happened the way they did, why he did certain things that I well, resented. Divorce. Yeah, because of the, the divorce, uh, the reasons for that, and, and uh, other things that, yeah. that, that happened. And I had b basically taken the default position of blaming him uh, for a lot of those uh, issues and, and, and problems, which is not to say that he was blameless, because he was not. And he definitely deserved most of the blame. But my mom also contributed in ways to that. And, and just to come back to her for a moment, which is also extremely important, I started talking about how they were so different. He grew up poor but had this intellectual orientation. My mom uh, was born in 39. She's also passed away, unfortunately. Uh, but but um, she grew up in a prosperous uh, uh, Afro-Métis, black and indigenous household, uh, and, but prosperous and mainly black in terms of their cultural right. uh, uh, followings, their practices, and, and uh, uh, from the country. And my father grew up in the, in the city, Halifax. Uh, they're only like 45 minutes apart. Uh, but in any event, to get to the point here, uh, she went to teacher's college. She did high school and she went to teacher's college. And she became an expert in early childhood education. Uh, and she started three daycares in her, in her time, uh, 
or kindergartens, one prefers, in Halifax. And Alexa McDonough, who became the leader of the uh, Nova Scotia New Democratic Party and also leader of the federal New Democratic Party, worked for my mom and was my kindergarten teacher. No way. <laughs> Yes. Yes way. Alexa McDonough was your kindergarten teacher? Yep. What are you, a socialist? There you go. Red diaper baby <laughs> from the get-go. There it is. All right, so. Alexa. She <laughs> Yeah, uh, there she was communicating those socialist ideas along with giving me these dinky toys, dinky cars to operate. Oh, no, you're not going to play with the army toys today. <laughs> that's right, just, just a few racing cars, that's it.